And now, a word from our pastor, Ron E. Stevens. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord to everybody who's in the sanctuary, and those of you on social media, I want to say, praise ye the Lord. God, God is good. The Bible says he's a very present help in trouble. And he's never, 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 never uh, has he separated himself from us. He's always present. And I give God praise and thanks for those of you who are here in the sanctuary. And for those of you who are on social media, we are grateful that you are here. You've joined us tonight for another Bible study. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I think that it's important that we continue to hear God's word. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the more we hear the word of God, the Bible assures us that our faith is in increase by hearing God's word. And if also, if we become a doer of the word, and not just hearers only, but God wants us to be doers of the word as well. So I'm, I'm very glad to be here tonight, amen, to, to share the word of the Lord tonight. We have a lot of ground to cover, so I want to open up with the word of prayer, and then we'll dive right into the word of God. Does that sound like a plan? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just give you all of the praise and glory for who you are. And we dare not start this, this Bible study without acknowledging you. You said in your word, in all of our ways, we should acknowledge you and you would direct our path. And we pray, God, that you would direct our path tonight, direct our mental path. I pray, God, our spiritual path. Give us direction for the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I pray, God, that you will order our steps. Give us clarity. Give us understanding, God. Challenge us. Motivate us. Encourage us. Fortify us, Lord, by the word of God. And we'll be sure to give you the glory. We thank God for those who are on social media tonight. And we thank God for those who are in the sanctuary. We now bless us indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, I'm glad tonight. This is our, our, our last Bible study for 2022. Amen. 52 Bible studies. Amen. And here we are again celebrating the Lord uh, through his word. Tonight, I want to talk about uh, our future. I want to talk about where we are, where we are going, and I want to talk about 2023 and laying the foundation for 2023. The scripture says, "Without the vision, the people they perish." And so, we want to look forward in terms of what God has for us. And tonight, we want to specifically look at getting ready for our consecration. For the month of January, we stop and pause and we have a, a consecration in which we focus more intensely uh, on some particular areas of our lives. And this coming Janu January, as we ha have done down through the years, we have, we have consecrated ourselves for the month of January. So this month, January, this coming month, January 2000, 2023, I want to lay the foundation for setting up the climate for the whole year. 
I believe when we get the, that first month right, we can get the whole year right. Amen? And so we're going to talk about getting ready for 2023 consecration. And it's 31 days in the month of January, and that's going to be our focus, our focus tonight. Well, the first question I raise is what is, what is consecration? What does it mean to be, to be consecrated? What, what does it mean to be consecrated? By definition, you'll note that in the Bible, the word consecration means the separation of oneself from things that are unclean, especially anything that would contaminate one's relationship with a perfect God. Consecration also carries the connotation of sanctification, holiness, and purity. The importance of being consecrated or pure in our relationship with God is emphasized in an incident in the book of Joshua. And not just in the book of Joshua, but we see consecration almost in every book of the Bible. We see consecration. That is being separate. One of the biggest challenges I think that the church uh, uh, face is the, is the fight of consecration. That, that is setting ourselves apart from the world. In the book of Joshua, a very powerful text, where Joshua encouraged the people to consecrate themselves before they went into the promised land, that you need to be able to separate yourself from, from those that are not believers in Jehovah God. We find Joshua told the people to consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do an amazing thing among you, according to Joshua 3 and 5. And our blessings are predicated to our consecration. If we set ourselves apart, God has a special blessing for me. We are a royal priesthood, aren't we? We are a chosen generation, aren't, aren't we? We're not the tail but the head because God has consecrated us. To, and God, in this, in this concept concerning consecrating yourself from Joshua 3 and 5, it's Joshua who says, turn your hearts to God, trust him, Put your faith in him. Put away sin. Be committed. And this is what it, this is what it means to be, to be consecrated. It is, it is the greatest need of the church is a spirit of consecration. Or, and I could put this in another term, the spirit of sanctification. The, the spirit of being set apart. It is so critical in our churches. And because we see the falling away of a desire to consecrate, there are all kinds of things that are slipping into the church because the church is not consecrated. There are a lot of things that we're permitting to go on in our sanctuaries is not among the sanctified. But God is calling us to be sanctified, isn't he? He's calling us to be, to be set apart. The Bible says he called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. He called us out of darkness. He sanctified us. He set us apart from darkness. That's why we owe him a praise. This term consecration defined, consecration is to be set apart as holy for the purposes of worshiping God. The number one reason God set me apart and saved me is to worship him. He called me to be a worshiper. In fact, when Pharaoh asked Moses, why, why are you guys leaving? He says, we're gonna, we got to get out of here because God is calling us to worship. And we're, going in, we're, we're leaving this place. We're not going to worship in Egypt, but we're going to the promised land, and we're going to worship. God sets us apart for a holy purpose of worshiping him. That's why he sets us apart. He wants to be glorified. And so for the month of January, we are going to consecrate ourselves. Here's the plan. You'll see it on the screen. We have corporate fasting and prayer for the, month of, for the month of January. I'm asking all members of Temple Church of Christ and those who partner with us, if you're willing to join us, we want you to fast with us in the month of January 2023. Fasting is a very powerful force. If you want to fight the devil, you've got to learn how to fast. There's some things comes with fasting and prayer, or prayer and fasting combined can do greater works. On one such occasion, the disciples could not, they could not perform a miracle, and they didn't understand it. 
and the apostles, and Jesus told those disciples, the reason why you can't get a breakthrough because some miracles come with fasting and prayer. It's prayer and fasting. So for the month of January, we're going to fast three times a week. We're going to fast on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's not too hard, is it? We're going to fast from 12.01 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. on Monday. 12.01 a.m. on Wednesday to 4 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday. And then on Friday from 12.01 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. on Friday. We're going to do that 12 times for in the month of for the month of January. We're asking everybody to get on board with this, with this because I think if the church, we move in the same direction, we can see God do some great works. Now, Monday when we fast, we're going to end up, we're going to have prayer every Monday. Monday is 7 o'clock. We'll continue to have prayer at 7 o'clock, so please join us. On Wednesday, when you get done fasting, get ready for Bible study. We'd like you to come in. This is an in-person service. We invite you to come into the sanctuary. Friday, of course, there's nothing going on in the evening, but we still ask you to, to fast until 4 o'clock. Fasting means you don't eat anything. No donuts, no cookies, no. You don't eat anything from, from 12.01 to 4 o'clock p.m. And when you break your fast, I ask that you will break it wisely. Uh, don't have 12 hamburgers. They're waiting for you at 12 o'clock, all right? <laughs> I mean, when you get done fasting, do it, do it with wisdom. I think fasting is the way that we fight the devil. The Bible says the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, it's not physical, but it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And the way we fight the devil, y'all, we got to fast. We have to fast and pray because this devil, he has really gotten really crazy. And I think that he's slipping into our churches, into our organizations, into our families. is nothing but Satan. But the blood of Jesus coupled with prayer and fasting, it'll defeat every enemy. The Bible tells us in James 4 and 7, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Well, you resist him through prayer and fasting, obeying his word and amen and reading his word as well. So what are we fasting about? What, what is the mission statement? I'm so glad you asked. We're going to fast, and you'll see this on the, on the website as well as, as, well as on our, uh, our app. We're going to fast for something specific every week. For the first week in January, we're going to be fasting for that God will send servers, people who were willing to serve. They're serving. They're willing to serve. What I mean by this, we need more workers in ministry, leadership excellence, volunteers in ministry. And let me tell you, we are fasting directed towards our mission statement. Many of you all, you all know our mission statement, don't you? Can you say it? To serve, to share, to worship, win souls, intercede, and to make disciples of Christ. Well, we're going to be fasting that God will raise up individuals who are prepared to serve in ministry, prepared to drive the van, prepared to work with the our Christian education department, prepared to work with the children's church, prepared to work in the nursery, prepared to work in our, in our juvenile penitentiary system, prepared to go out into the street on the evangelism team. We got a whole lot of work to do, but, but we, need to, we need people to work. The Bible says that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. We need the people who are going to sign up and willing to work. So we're going to fast about that, that God will raise up people who are prepared to serve. The second week in, Janu in, in, in uh, January, our focus is going to be on sharing. And what that means will be, will you be hearing us talk about it? You'll hear more focus on it. Sharing has to do with, with giving, has, has to do with sowing, giving, your time, your talent, your treasures, your tithes. We're praying that God will tenderize our hearts, that everybody in the church will believe in sowing into ministry. Most people who sow in ministry are blessed. All, in fact, people who sow in the ministry are blessed. And those who don't sow are not blessed. But we're going to pray that God will, will stir up our spirit because we have things we want to do here at Temple Church of Christ. We have some capital projects that we want to start, and it's going to take some money to do it. 
And we're going to pray that God will bless us, that money come in some crazy, come in some crazy ways. People get some crazy financial blessings, that doors open up, unexpected money come in, unexpected blessings come in. But we're going to pray for that Lord bless us, press down, shaking together, running over, that we're going to be blessed. Amen. The third week, we're going to be praying on, on concerning a worship, that we want God to bless the sanctuary to, that people walk into the sanctuary, they get the Holy Ghost when they walk into the door. Come on, somebody. Praying that people come in here who have chains around their, their spirits, their yokes are being broken. We want to pray for that the third week. We're all on one accord. We want to pray that the atmosphere, the sanctuary, that people are all together and we're worshiping together with one mind and one desire. That's the third week. We're praying for the praise and worship team, that God will anoint the praise and worship team and all of our musicians to pray with such an anointing. Do you remember when David played his harp or his guitar, whatever, whichever instrument he was playing, because he could play multiple instruments, and it did something to King Saul's spirit, that, that that spirit, there was a wicked spirit that was on King Saul, but because the worship was so thick from the lips of David, it did something to King Saul. And King Saul found great relief uh, because of the power of the music of, of David. I believe that power is still here in St. Louis, Missouri. I believe that, that's, that, that the climate can be so thick and so rich in this church that when people walk in here, something happens to them. Even before they go any place, they get the Holy Ghost in the pew. Amen? They get healed in the pew. Let's pray for, that God can do that. So the third week, we, we're praying for worship. And not only that, we're praying for the winning of souls. Third week, we are praying on one accord. We're praying that God will save our relatives, our sons, our children, grandsons, aunts, uncles, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, ex-boyfriends, ex-wife, whatever. But we're praying that God will save souls in that third week. So the third week, we're on worship. God, give us intense worship. And I pray, God, that you allow the church to be a church where we're out winning souls. We're going out into the community, inviting people to come in, raising up young evangelists and witnesses who are not ashamed. I'm saying to you, we have a plan. So we're not just fasting, but we are fasting for a purpose. We're fasting for a purpose. We're also, too, we find uh, in the fourth, the fourth week, uh, the fourth week is also interceding for deliverance. Those who are struggling with cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, lying demons, sect demons, whatever it may be, we're going to ask God for deliverance in the fourth, fourth week. In the fifth week, we ask God to bless our Christian education department, making disciples for Christ, the Christian education department, save our youth, children's ministry, children's church. So every week we have a mission. Every week we have a purpose for our fasting. We want to see something happen, don't we? We want to see change. Don't we want to see change? What is going to take prayer? I'm inviting also everybody for the month of January. I'm inviting everybody to our prayer, Monday night prayer meeting. Monday night prayer meeting. Everybody is invited, especially to our young millennials. We in Generation X, Y, and Z, our young people, we're calling you to Monday night prayer. It is our consecration. There the phone number is uh, on the screen. It's also on the app and also on our website. But for Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m., we're inviting everybody, everybody on Monday night to join us in prayer. And while you're in prayer, turn your TV off. Turn your games off. And sit attent attentively and listen and pray with the person who's leading in prayer. So we're inviting everybody boys, girls, young and old, to please join us. Pastor Stephen, what are you doing? We are setting ourselves up for consecration. Now, some of us were already doing Some of us are already going to prayer meetings. We're already praying. Some of us are already, are already there. We want you to stay there and go just a little bit higher up. We're going to be fasting again this coming, uh, this coming month. I want to make sure I'm clear with that. No junk food for the entire month of January. I want you to get rid of junk food any kind of junk food what's junk food well, there are some examples on the screen how you might want to define it we want you to have discipline in your eating look when you can control what you eat you can control everything else in your life one of the most difficult things to do is to stop eating certain things 
And so we're going to encourage everybody with the best of your ability because some people struggled last year. Some people had some tough times, but we're going to try it one more time, amen, to get rid of the junk food. We're asking everyone also doing a this a consecration to eliminate TV watching uh, during your fast times. So between 12 a.m. and 4, we say no TV watching. Cut that one-eyed demon off. And cut that TV off. I'm only joking, all right? But cut that TV off. We're going to fast from 12.01 a.m. to 4 with no TV watching during your fast. And after 4 o'clock, you want to turn on, watch the news. That's okay. But between your 1 and 4, you are consecrating yourselves. Amen. Ain't nobody shouting tonight, but this is the right thing to do. Amen. No watching movies online. No electronic games. Now, of course, on Wednesday, you can watch the, 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 the Bible study because that's after 4 o'clock. But we're saying that during your fast time, no watching of TV, also no watching movies online, no electronic games or entertainment during your fast times. So from 12.01 to 4 o'clock, no watching TV. And I would encourage you not to play any games at all for the month of January. You are consecrating yourself. You are setting yourself apart. Amen, somebody? Are we all on the same page? I hope we are. I think for 2023, we're going to carry it over. I felt led in my spirit that we're going to continue to work with the theme, winning souls for Jesus. I don't think there can be anything more critical for us to do at this point, at this point in time is winning souls. As the pandemic now is somewhat weaned down, it's kind of peak spiked a little bit in a couple of weeks, but we're going to see more people come to the church. We're going to see more people looking for an answer to salvation. And is that if there's ever time for us to point people to Jesus, I believe that this is the time. So our theme will remain the same as it was in 2022, winning souls for Jesus. It's our number one priority. And, and in fact, our ministers will be speaking on next Wednesday. And the following Wednesday, every Wednesday, all of our ministers, we have eight ministers who are going to be speaking on, on this theme, winning souls for Jesus. From Proverbs and we find from Proverbs 11 and 30, uh, B is, and he that when his souls is wise, is a part of our theme. And also our theme from Matthew uh, 9, chapter verses 35 through verses 38. And Jesus went about all the city and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous. Next slide. But the labors are few. Ooh, isn't that powerful? He said the harvest is truly plenteous. Plenteous. But the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest, the Lord of that harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. That's one thing that we are fasting about. We're fasting that the Lord will send laborers, laborers into the harvest. Somebody say amen. So January again is a month of consecration. We're setting ourselves apart we're fasting for about 12 days, and it is, the next slide, it is, the theme is winning souls for, for, G, for Jesus. During the month of January, I, I, we state that we have, next slide, we have eight dynamic consecration speakers and teachers for our weekly Bible study on Wednesday. The first Wednesday in January, we have Minister Andrew Pearson and Elder Eric Griffin. On January 11th, the second week in January, we have Minister Pamela Laurie and Elder Andrew Williams. And the third week in January, we have Dr. Cheryl Steed and Dr. Timothy Staples. In the fifth week or the fourth week, that is in January, we have Minister Nitra Crisp and Minister Michael Crisp. And they will be our speakers for the month of January. And they will be encouraging us to carry that theme throughout throughout the year. Amen? We've got a lot to cover, but God can help us. Also, we're asking everybody to continue to read uh, your Bible every day. We have 
a consecration reading for the book for the month of excuse me for the month of January we are reading the book of Job the book of Job and so on January 1st we will read Job chapter number one and continue to read that book until we are completed reading that book so we'll read that book for the entire month of of January it is a part of our consecration please go on the app check yes when you have read let's be consistent set a certain time certain place and let's read the Word of God amen also for the month of January we're asking you to be why amen it's a part of our consecration bring your own Bible on Sunday for the month of January everybody ought to have a Bible thank God for our electronic devices Amen. But you ought to have some, you have to have a paper Bible. Amen. A book that is it's out of paper. Amen. I think you ought to have one. Uh, we do have extra Bibles that are for sale in the bookstore for $10. If you do not have a Bible, we encourage you to go to the bookstore and get yourself a Bible. Everybody ought to have a Bible. Somebody say amen one more time. So bring your own Bible in, in the month of, of January. I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about fasting. I want to talk about fasting because what makes the, our consecration really powerful is our willingness and our ability to fast. Somehow fasting has slipped out of a lot of our churches, but we've come to we come to restart. We come to rethink the the necessity and the importance of fasting. There's a little video that I showed a couple of years ago, and I want to show it one more time. Ella Griffin, we prepared to show a video. Here's a gentleman, uh, his last name is Mr. Whitley, who wrote a book on the spiritual disciplines, and he's going to give us just a five-minute uh, synopsis on the purpose of, of the purpose of fasting, the purpose of fasting. I think most of the people watching this video would be familiar that fasting is in the Bible. For example, in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, it says Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. But now let's talk about how he quoted scripture to the devil. So we know it's there. We sort of, we sort of pass over it. But it's a very important teaching in scripture. It's a very important spiritual discipline. Not in the sense that it's a mechanistic way of getting our prayers answered. That if you will fast, that guarantees that God will answer. That, that's a theology of works there. And even though our fasting doesn't manipulate God, let's be reminded fasting is God's idea. The most important thing about fasting when you actually try it is to realize that fasting is to be done for a purpose, a God-centered biblical purpose. Otherwise, it becomes a miserable self-centered experience. Uh, so many people say, well, I've heard about fasting, so I decided to try it. And, Boy, I was so hungry, and all I could think about was the growling of my stomach, and I thought, boy, if I ever get through this, I'll never do this again. So um, they, they finish, and their whole time, whenever they're hungry, they think, man, how much longer till this is over? Their whole thought is, how long till it's over? That's, that's just works. That's just legalism. That's just endurance and self-inflicted suffering in hopes that God will be impressed by my self-inflicted suffering. That's not what fasting is about. The most important thing about fasting is to is to practice fasting for a God-centered biblical purpose. In my book, Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life, I, I summarize 10 purposes found in scripture for fasting, but most of them have to do in one way or another with, with prayer, to strengthen prayer. John Piper speaks of fasting as an intensifier. Here's how it should work for the motive to be right. When your stomach growls, when your head aches, and you say, man, I'm hungry. Your next thought's going to be, oh, that's right, I'm hungry because I'm fasting today. If your next thought is, and how much longer till it's over, wrong motive. It's going to be just a bad experience. But your next thought should be, oh, and I'm fasting for this biblical purpose. So, for example, let's say you're fasting for the purpose of praying for your spouse or for the salvation of your child. And throughout the day, your stomach aches and growls, your ear head hurts and you think oh man I'm really hungry oh that's right I'm hungry because I'm fasting today oh that's right I'm fasting for the purpose of praying for my wife for my child so what do you do all day long you're praying so actually you want to feel hunger your hunger serves you your hunger serves your higher purpose which is to pray all day for your spouse or for your child 
So that's why hunger is a good thing when it comes to fasting because you've got to, it, the goal is not to feel hungry. The goal is not to suffer and think that God will be impressed by your suffering. The hunger serves your higher purpose, which is to pray for your spouse, to pray for your child or whatever uh, it, it might be. So I think most people have a fear of fasting. Of all the spiritual disciplines, it is the one we feel in our bodies. And it's an uncomfortable feeling. No one likes to feel hungry. But when you remember that your hunger serves you, I mean, is there never a time you want a prayer answered more than you want lunch? Is there never a time you, you want someone to be saved more than you want a Big Mac? Well, that's where fasting comes in. When you say, I want this so much, I want to pray about this all day. And I'm going to fast as a reminder, to use that hunger as a reminder for this all day long. Some people say, I would like to serve others more. I would like to have more money to give. That's where fasting can come in. Don't have lunch. Use your lunch hour to serve someone. Use your lunch money to give. So we dare not miss the many benefits there are fasting. Don't be afraid of fasting. Now, I think it's important to add uh, this feature because I see this a lot with my students. When I talk about fasting, some people, a lot of people, in fact, will rule themselves out because they're diabetic or maybe they're pregnant or they have uh, migraines if they fast. Well, certainly we would not want to be asking anyone to do anything that would cause any harm to themselves or, or certainly to uh, their unborn child. But I, in the Bible, Daniel, you'll remember, in the first chapter, and his 10 friends uh, had only vegetables to eat for a period of time and water to drink instead of the food that was offered to them. And so his, historically, we've looked at that as a partial fast. So I found that in, in almost every case where a person wants to fast, but they have some physical limitation, by means of a partial fast, they can participate. And traditionally, this has been one of two ways. If they need balanced nutrition, they have a balanced meal, but much smaller portions. Or maybe they just have one simple food, like just rice, just bread. And the point is to get the minimal nutritional intake to keep them from having physical problems, but yet they still feel a lack of full satisfaction, they still feel a little hungry, or they have something that, that prompts them physically still to pray. So I think where, there, where there's a will, there's a way. Our flesh wants to excuse all of us. We don't enjoy hunger, so we say, well, I can't fast for this reason, or I can't fast for that reason. Well, we wouldn't want, we wouldn't want to ask anyone to fast in such a way that would cause them any physical harm whatsoever. However, where there's a will, there's a way. So it may be through a limited uh, meal that we'd call a partial fast, but usually where people want to do this, they can find a way to do this. And I hope those who are watching this video, if they've never done that before, will give it a try. You know, one meal can be a fast. It doesn't have to be 24 hours. Anyone planning on a longer fast of three days or more, maybe should get some medical advice before they do that. But even one meal for spiritual purposes can be a biblical fast. Amen. Thanks for watching Honest Answers. Amen. Thank you. Wow, wasn't that powerful? Amen. I, I like the part where he says, I, I, I want to see somebody get saved more than a hamburger. Amen. That he had a desire to see someone get saved. Uh, and also fast doesn't have to be for 24 hours. That's why we're stopping at four. If you want to go longer, you can, but four o'clock is, is, is good. So, and I, like he said, the phrase a couple of times, if those, if you, if you have a will, there's a way, if you have a will there, there's a way, there is a way to fast. So we like everybody who's watching on social media and those in the sanctuary to embrace this concept of fasting for, uh, for the month of January for a biblical purpose, for Bible, um, fasting for Bible reasons, for healing, for deliverance, for souls to be saved. There are biblical reasons that we're fasting. So let's kind of keep that in mind for having a really great purpose for fasting. Let's go further and talk about more reasons for fasting because we're preparing for our consecration. Uh, and I believe the Lord is going to bless us tremendously. I'm expecting healing testimonies, deliverance testimonies. I'm expecting souls to be one in 2023. I'm expecting 2023 to be one of the best years at Temple Church Christ 
ever. That's what, that's what my faith is. I'm believing God is going to do it. So the purpose of fasting, I'm going to give you a few points, and then I'll be done with the Bible study tonight. But one of the reasons we, we fast is to, practice, is to practice moderation in all things. Sometimes spirits get into the church, spirits of perversion, uh, because the church is not fasting. Back in the day when churches were really intent on fasting, there was a lot of perversion that could not exist in the church because the church was all fasted up. I mean, they were, they were fasting, and they were sensitive to the voice, to the voice of God. Philippians 4 and 5 says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. And when we fast, we are really we are practicing moderation. We really, really are. The second thing we should understand the purpose of fasting is to strengthen your prayer. If you want your prayer life to be strengthened, the thing you really ought to do, you really ought to pray. You ought to pray. We find in Ezra chapter 8, verse 23, the Bible says, So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. He said we fasted. Why, why has fasting stopped in the church? Why, why are we not fasting? Fasting, as Dr. Donald Whitney said, it is a biblical concept, but we are going back to fasting. We're not, in fact, after January, January we want to continue to fast every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I'm inviting everybody to continue to fast on, on Wednesday. But in January, we're going to do it on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, three times per week for the month of, Janu for the month of January. But it is to strengthen your prayer. Have you ever fasted and prayed at the same time? There is a difference. There, are tremendous, there is a tremendous difference. But fasting is to strengthen our, our prayer life. Look, you want your prayer life to be stronger? Fast. Fast while you're praying. Try fasting and see what the Lord does with your prayer life. Amen? The third thing we must understand, the purpose of fasting, is to seek God's guidance. You said, I want God to direct me, but you should be prepared to fast. Uh, you need to, you know, stop going to those Krispy Kreme donuts and lay that, 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 turn that plate over and say, God, I need you to give me some direction. Amen, somebody? If we want to see God's direction, if we're really serious, I need a word from the Lord, then you need to turn your plate over and say, I'm going to fast until I can hear a word from the Lord. Acts 14, 23 gives us clarity when it tells us, and when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they had believed. As they sent individuals out to work in ministry, the apostles, they would fast for God's guidance. Have you made a decision and did not fast in the past? I suggest if you have a critical decision to make in your life, that you would fast first and ask God for guidance. Somebody say amen out there. The third purpose of fasting is to express grief. We find in 1 Samuel 31 and 13, and they took their bones and buried them under a tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. And one of the ways, this is more culture, but it's also a spiritual benefit, is that they, they fasted to express their grief and, and, and sadness in concerning the death in that particular chapter. We find also another reason, the purpose of fasting, is to seek deliverance and protection. You want to fight the devil, I dare you to fast. I dare you to fast. I dare you to fast. See, what, what, when you fast, you're less, you desynthesize yourself. You're less, you're less aware of the voices of the devil, and you're more sensitive to the voice of the Lord. When you, when you fast, you put yourself on a different frequency. You know, back in the day, we had these little radios, and you had to find certain frequencies. There's a frequency called fasting, and God will speak on the frequency of fasting. Look at 2 Chronicles 20. Verses 3 and 4. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. He proclaimed a fast. He was under much stress. When you're under much stress and you don't eat because you stress out, that's not a fast. Fast is when you separate yourself from eating food for a biblical purpose. It's for a godly reason. Amen? Not just because you lost your appetite 
and you say, well, I'm fasting because I lost my appetite. That's not a fast. But when you say, I'm intentionally not eating, I'm intentionally not eating any food because I want to see the hand of God. I want to see his deliverance. I want to see his protection. It's gotten so now they're putting chemicals in our food now, and, and, and there's studies that have been shown that, that, that they're putting chemicals in our food that makes us addicted to certain kinds of foods. And so that people are eating foods because, not because they're necessarily hungry, because some of these manufacturers have put chemicals in our food. But we have got to fight back and say, I don't care what kind of chemical you put in this food, Leroy not eating today. Amen? So Jehoshaphat, he feared and set, him, and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast day throughout all Judea. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Whenever you see the word seek in the Old Testament, it has to do with fasting and prayer. Seeking always has to do with fasting and prayer. The psalmist says, when thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said, my heart said, thy face will I seek. It has to do with fasting and prayer always applies to reading God's word and also with prayer and, fa and fasting is, when, is what the word seek denotes of. So we want to fight the enemy and deal with the forces of the enemy. We have got to, we got to fast. The purpose of fasting is to express repentance and return to God. When a person fasts, it is a sign to God of a repentant heart. The Bible says the broken heart and a contrite spirit, the Lord will not despise. Man, it's hard to stop eating. Man, the foods that we eat, it is difficult. But when you stop and say, Lord, I'm going to stop eating because I want you to touch my heart. I want you to forgive me. I want you to first help me to forgive myself. I want you to strengthen me, Lord, and give me the power that I need. So it, it is expressed repentance. When you really repent and your heart is broken, you'll turn your plate over and say, you know what? I'm going to seek the Lord. And when you do this, you don't brag about it. I'm going to talk about that in a few seconds. You don't, when you fast, you don't put something on Facebook. You don't put something on social media that Lucy and Leroy are fasting this morning. Don't call me. No, you, you're not supposed to do it the way you already got your blessing because you advertise in other people how spiritual you are. But back to Joel 2 and 12, the Bible says, Therefore also now, said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. So often I hear people say, Pastor, I just want to get closer and closer to God. Pastor, my, my greatest desire is to get closer and closer to God. I say, why don't you fast? Well, I don't know about fasting. But that's the way you get close to God. You, you turn your plate over. And listen to what the Lord has said to you. If you really want to get close to God, turn your plate over. And say, I'm not eating today. I'm not going to let the Lord speak to my spirit. I'm going to meditate on God's word. I'm just going to just hear a word from the Lord. Because he's speaking to my inner man. The deep call unto the, unto the deep. And God is speaking to my spirit. So we see another reason, a purpose of fasting, is to humble oneself before God. When, when you fast, it is the, one of the highest levels of humility is when you humble yourself. Do you know what the Bible says? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he shall exalt you in due season. One of the ways we humble ourselves is by fasting. We don't go around advertising it. We don't go around telling everybody in the community that we're fasting. Uh, but we put a smile on our face. We wash our face. And we go about the day just as happy as we know. But on the inside, there's a suffering going on the inside. Because this body says, I want to eat. I want to eat. And you say, no, you're not going to eat. This is a good way to have power over your flesh. You tell your flesh, no, I am in charge today. If you don't act right, you may fast on two days. You don't act right. You, you got to make sure that you are in charge of your flesh. It is a high level of humility is when you can allow your spirit to reign over your flesh. Somebody say amen to that. The Bible says in Psalms 35, 13, but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sack, sackcloth. I humbled my soul. I humbled my soul with fasting 
and my prayer return unto my own bosom. I tell you, it's something about fasting that does something to your spirit. I never saw a person who was a serious faster and got big-headed, a narcissistic, uh, uh, puffed up. But when you are fasting, it does something to your spirit. You're less aware of what you're all about, and you're more conscious of God and the purpose in which you are fasting. The way we bring humility to the church is that we humble ourselves. This is why we're fasting for our, our consecration. We are humbling ourselves. We're saying, God, not me, but you. You come before I come. Lord, your, 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 what you want is priority in my life. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. Look, when we put God first, it is a way of hum it is a sign of humility. I'm humbling myself today because I'm not going to eat today. It is a it is a it is a it is a language of humility towards the Lord. I, I'm, I'm praying that God will give us a, a, a fasting among our young people that our young teenagers and Generation X and Y, millennials, and even the baby boomers will embrace this thing called fasting. I believe that if we start fasting, we'll see a revival in this city. I believe we start fasting, the devil just won't have it. He won't have his way because what the devil does, he works on our emotions. He works on our desires. But if you are a serious faster, you know how to say no to your flesh, and you sure know how to say no to the devil. You tell me which one is more powerful, the flesh or, or the devil? Who gives you the most trouble? Is it the devil or your flesh? Well, my survey says, the people say, it's the flesh that give me more trouble. The devil, he'll hit and run. I can rebuke him, but I got to take this flesh home. The flesh gives us a whole lot of trouble, but there's something called, something called fasting. It is, a, it is a flesh tamer. It is my whip. It, flesh, you better get back in the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. A purpose of fasting. Number, number eight, we find to express concern for the work of God. When we're fasting for, for service in this church, fasting for revival, fasting for, for hearts to be healed, fasting for people to be delivered, fasting for the praise team to go to the next level, fasting for to, we're fasting that the church can serve and, and to share and to worship and win souls and intercede and make disciples for Christ. When, when we are fasting concerning God's work, he blesses us. Daniel 9 and 3 says, And I set my face unto the Lord, God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. That word supplication has to do with a spirit of humility, lowliness on one's knee, bowed on one's knees, lying prostrate before the Lord. What God is saying to express concern for God's, for the work of God is often seen in fasting and this is why some people don't fast because they're not committed to the work of God they're not serious to see things happen in the church they're not serious about binding demons and casting out spirits but when you are serious about the work of God you will fast you will pray and you say no I'm not running from the devil I'm not running from demons we just read a couple of days ago out of Esther when Esther had to go before the, the king. She said, we're going to go on a fast. And if I perish, I perish. But she put everybody on a fast. We're going to fast so that when, the, when things happen, we're not shaking in our boots. We're going to fast so we can hear what God is saying to us. The purpose of fasting. Number nine, the purpose of fasting is to minister to the needs of others. When you fast, your primary objective is to fast outwardly. You're fasting for somebody else. You're not fasting for a Rolls Royce or a Bentley. You're not, you're not fasting for a big house on the hill. Fasting primarily is for somebody else. It is directed away from you, although you will get a, a blessing. It has a boomerang effect. But fasting is you're fasting for somebody else. It's not about just you, I, and me. But I'm fasting for souls to be saved. Fasting for souls to be delivered in the penitentiaries. Fasting for marriages to be healed. Fasting for relationships to be healed. Fasting for single people to be strong in their singleness. You are fasting away from yourself. Fasting is not self-centered. I'll prove it to you in the text. Isaiah 58 verses 6 and 7. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? How? To, to loose the bands of wickedness? To undo heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free that that ye break every yoke. Is that not the fast I called? Is it is is it not to deal 
thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou, that thou covered him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. This text is telling us that fasting is directed outwardly. Come on, somebody. Fasting is not self-centered. Fasting is because you're considering other people who have less. But let me tell you, when you do that, God's going to bless you. It's going to come back. It's going to come back, pressed down, shaking together, running over. But fasting is not about you. It's about other people who are less fortunate than yourself and those who are in bondage. And this is what the church needs. We need fasters. People are willing to fast for somebody else or to intercede for others as well. Number 10, the purpose of fasting, to overcome temptation and dedicate yourself to God. You want to find a new way how to fight the devil? You need to fast. The fight that you had last week with the devil, did you fast about it? I'm telling you, when you spend time with God and you fast in that secret place of the Most High and he talks to you, he will raise you up. He will give you strength. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse number 7, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Well, who was Jesus talking to? He was talking to the devil, to Satan. And Satan had come to tempt him. But Jesus was on a fast. He was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And when the devil came to tempt him, he was able to quote the word of God. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, one of the greatest powers you can have is fasting and calling out God's word. Fasting and saying what God has said through his word. It will, it will help you to overcome temptation and the devil's, the devil's attack. I have another one I want to share with you. The purpose of fasting. The purpose of fasting, my last point tonight, is to express love and worship to God. When we, we fast, we express love and worship to God. In this culture, it is anti-fasting, it is anti-prayer, it is anti-church, but we got to hold on to this thing called fasting because God wants us to fast. And that's what we're going to do in the month of January. January, We're going to fast. If you mess up on Wednesday, I'll be back on Friday. Mess up on Friday, I'll be back on Monday. I'm going to fast. I'm going to have control over my desires and my flesh. I'm going to humble myself. And as I fast, God is going to bless me. Hallelujah to the king. Luke 2, 37 tells us, and when she, a widow of, of about four score, four score and four years, 84, the age she was, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayer night and day. That Anna was in the temple, but she was a woman who would fast. We cannot be afraid of fast. As Dr. Uh, Donald Whit Whitney just stated, one of the of all the disciplines in the church, one of the disciplines that saints don't latch on to is fasting because it is the only discipline that has pain to it. You can pray, no pain. Read your Bible, no pain. Take notes, no, no pain. But when it comes to fasting, there is a personal pain that you experience. Oh, but somebody says no pain, no gain. I mean, this is the kind of pain that really can take you to the next spiritual level. Somebody say amen. So in the month of January, we're going to have a breakthrough. We're going to set the stage for a powerful revival at Temple Church of Christ. It's going to be powerful because we're humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he's going to open up doors as never before. I declare it, and I decree it in Jesus' name. These Bible speakers coming up in January are going to give us so much bread to eat. They're going to fill our hearts with so much faith that we're going to get ready. Oh, shama. We're going to get ready for the next move of God. He's going to do some great things. It won't be by osmosis. It's going to be a fight. Oh, God, it's going to be a fight. Oh, God, but we're prepared to fight a good fight of faith. We come having done all to stand, we, we're going to stand. So let me summarize tonight the points tonight that we're talking about. We are getting ready for consecration. I mentioned to you that consecration is to be set apart, is to be sanctified. Oh, God, can you imagine a church that's truly set apart and sanctified? Oh, great things will happen. They won't be afraid to talk to people who come into the church. They won't be afraid to lay hands upon sick people. They won't be afraid to witness because they are sanctified. One we're going to do, here's our plan. 
we planned part of our consecration consists of attending prayer meetings. I want everybody to attend prayer meetings. Turn your TV off. If you're not at work and you're at home, get on the prayer line. And be a part of our prayer meeting. If you can't say anything, just say, yes, Lord, while people are praying. Say something, but I want you to join us on prayer because prayer is going to open up the door. Number two, for our consecration, I want everybody to fast. If you have a, a, some health issues, do the best you can. But, if you, if you, but a willing heart will find a way. I want everybody to fast in the month of, of, of January. Everybody fans win on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday, three times a week. You don't eat between 12 and 4, almost a poem. Uh, but you want to go three times a week and not eat. Amen? N number three, attend Sunday morning worship service. I want you, all the members of Temple Church of Christ, starting in 2023, to come to church. Thank God for you, those on social media. We love you all so much, but we want you all to come to church on Sunday. Amen? To be a part of the house of God and come out to Bible study as well. Number four, we want you to attend Wednesday Bible class. I know that it's getting cold. Oh, I know it's getting chilly, but you know what? The Lord will take care of you. So we want you to come to Wednesday night Bible study. If you just can't come, at least be online. If you're online, at least make them comments. Say something. Say praise the Lord, everybody. At least be uh, engaged and present. Number five, we want everybody to bring your Bible, uh, read your Bible every day. And we're just recapping what we talked about. I want you in your word every day. One brother told me, I read the Bible. I read all my chapters on Monday, and I just check. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Read a chapter a day. Read a chapter a day. One more person, I read three chapters, and then I go check, check, check. No, read one chapter a day. I take one vitamin a day. I don't take all my vitamin Cs on the same day. I take a vitamin C on a Monday, vitamin C on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's one vitamin a day. Do you not know that the Word of God is your spiritual vitamin? Take one vitamin a day, at least one chapter. And it only takes a few minutes to read the word of God. Amen. We want you to read the word of God. And finally, a part of our consecration, we want you to be Y-O-B. We want you to bring your own Bible. Amen. Bring your own Bible. Be intentional. As one sister said, I don't know if I even have a Bible or not. I said, that's why we're having the BYOB. We want you to go find your book, find wherever it is in the trunk of your car, wherever you left it, pick it up, dust it off, open it up. Let's hear those pages flip, amen, because we need to be able to read our Bible as well. Thank God for our apps. I'm, I'm not anti-apps, anti-electronics, but I think we still need to hold on to our Bible. I hope that you would agree with me on that point as well. I'm excited about the, the consecration. I'm excited about what God is going to do and what he is doing and if you're not a member of temple church of christ and you want to participate you are certainly certainly uh, uh, uh you're certainly free to join us uh, uh we are happy if you would join us you're free to do that and you can join us as well but those of us who are members of temple church of christ i am inviting you to consecrate yourselves for the month of january can i get two amens amen can't get four i got a lot more thank you amen so we ask everybody to please join us as i wrap up i still want to remind everybody that this consecration is a wonderful thing it's to be set apart and that's why jesus came into the world to set us apart amen to set us apart and the process is very simple we we repent repentance is a part of that of that sanctification process and then we're baptized in water, the wonderful name of Jesus. That's a part of that process. And then he fills us with the Holy Ghost. That's a part of that process. If you're not giving your life to Christ, I ask you to do it today. It's a type of consecrating. He's setting you apart. God is a good God. He's a holy God. Leviticus 19.2 declares him to be a holy God. He's holy. And he wants to make you holy. He wants to set you apart. Please consider giving your life to the Lord. It's a decision you'll never regret. Amen. There's a number on the screen. Please call that number and someone will respond to your call. Please do. At this time now, we'll have Elder Griffin to give us our weekly announcements. Thank you, Pastor Stevens, and thank you to everyone that's tuned in to tonight's live telecast. We pray that you have enjoyed everything that you have heard tonight. You're welcome to go back and watch this broadcast to get a refresher on everything that you have heard. This year's theme at Temple Church of Christ is Winning Souls for Jesus. 
And our mission statement at TCLC is that we swim. We serve, share, worship, win souls, intercede, and make disciples for Christ. Some of the ways we swim are shown in the following announcements. Join us for our weekly scheduled services, Christian education every Sunday morning, 9 o'clock a.m., followed by our morning worship experience at 10.30 a.m. Join us for Monday night prayer over the telephone, 7 o'clock p.m., 508-924-3730. That's the number that you would call. And then don't forget to join us on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. for Wednesday night Bible study. You're welcome to join us online or in person as well. Our Victorious Living Teleconference call, it meets every Saturday morning, 9 o'clock a.m. with Evangelist Cheryl Oliver, Minister Angela Pearson. Dial the number that you see on the screen, 909-318-7708. They also meet on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock a.m. during our Christian Education Hour. Please keep in mind that we will not have an auxiliary leaders meeting this month for December. So that meeting that was supposed to be December 29th has been canceled. Our regular services will resume this week. Join us on New Year's Day, Sunday, January 1st. Christian education will happen at 9 o'clock a.m., followed by a morning worship experience at 10.30 a.m. We hope that you will join us for both sessions. During January, join us for our consecration, which begins on Wednesday, January the 4th, with two ministerial aligned speakers doing the Bible study each Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. On January 4th, Minister Angela Pearson and Elder Eric Griffin. January the 11th, Minister Pamela Lowry and Elder Andrew Williams. January 18th, Dr. Cheryl Steed and Dr. Timothy Staples. And on January 25th, Ministers Nidra and Michael Chris. Check the TCLC app for the PDF pamphlet regarding our consecration information. We invite everyone to join and visit the TCLC bookstore. They're open every Sunday morning from 9 o'clock a.m. until 10, 15 a.m. You're welcome to purchase your new Bible there as well, as other well as there are other Christian education books that will be there for your classes and the book entitled A New Holiday and the Heart Monitor. You can contact Minister Pamela Mitchell Thornton and she'll be happy to give you some additional information. B-Y-O-B, bring your own Bibles, starting January 1st, 2023. Let's get back to the Bible by bringing a hard copy Bible during worship services instead of your electronic devices. Please remember that Bibles are also available for purchase in the TCOC bookstore. Stand by for these TCOC Christian education events starting on Sunday, January 1st. The senior high and middle school classes will be combined during their Christian education for Curve the Urge class. It's continuing the subject that is taught by our UNSO staff from the spiritual perspective. So we invite you to join us for that class at 9 o'clock a.m. The Christian Education Board is inviting all TCOC members to participate in the 2023 Christian Education Attendance Challenge. That will begin on Sunday, January the 8th. Members of TCLC will receive a $10 TCLC bookstore credit for every month of perfect attendance. And that means you are attending Sunday of the you're attending every Sunday of the month and arriving within the first 10 minutes of class. Also, by maintaining perfect quarterly attendance, you have the opportunity to shop from a catalog of amazing gifts that are handpicked just for TCLC members. The next new members class of the Temple Church of Christ will also begin on Sunday, January 8th. All new members and those who are interested in becoming members of TCOC are invited to attend. Classes will run four consecutive weeks and students will need to attend all four classes to complete the course. If you're interested in signing up for this class, please see Sister Carol Battle Barnes, Minister Nidra Crisp, or Sister Natasha Williams. Transportation is now available for members and visitors who need a ride to Christian education classes on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock a.m. To request transportation, please complete and submit information to the, on a Google form that's found on the app. You'll see that link there. Or if you prefer, you can complete a hard copy form and give that to Sister Natasha Williams. But we look forward to seeing you at Christian education. Also, please keep in mind that the Christian Education Board needs faithful volunteers to serve in the following capacities. Assistant Treasurer, our 2023 Attendance Program Coordinator, and a Nursery Assistant. If you're interested in serving in any of these capacities or for any questions, please contact our Christian Education Director, Sister Natasha Williams. Please don't forget those IC3 cards. We ask you to stay tuned for more information regarding the IC3 Challenge. It's a nice game where most members are able to make connections with people who they see in church. This will be recognized every third Sunday beginning in January. Please contact Sisters DeLois Blue or Karen Allen 
for more information. If you have moved in 2022, please update your information in GiveLify or on the Tide envelope so that you will receive your tax letter and other information sent from TCLC. Also, don't forget to join us in reading the word of the Lord as we're continuing closing out the book of Colossians this last week. And then we'll also start our January readings in the book of Job, chapters 1 through 31. Read the assigned chapter with the corresponding day. Go to the TCLC app under the events tab and click yes. That way you will be in compliance for reading that particular day. These announcements can be found on Facebook, the TCOC app, and the TCOC website. They are also sent out via Faith Teams text messages. Please remember to check all modes of communication for all TCOC events. You're now back in the hands of Suffolk and Bishop Ron Stevens. Thank you. Thank you, Ella Griffin. And thank you, Lady D, for also handling the work helping us with our PowerPoint. And all of those of you on social media, thank you for joining us. And especially for those of you in the sanctuary, thank you for coming out tonight. Amen. We're getting ready for consecration. I would like to announce that there is no night watch service. Our tradition has been for the last couple of years, uh, prior to the uh, pandemic, we would have night watch service. But there's no service. The next service will be this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday at 9 o'clock. All right. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we, we thank you for your goodness. And we thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity that we can come into this house. And we thank you for those on social media who have joined us as well. I pray, God, you bless us to sanctify ourselves, to consecrate ourselves. I pray, God, that as we consecrate, as we sanctify ourselves, I pray that you will speak to us. I pray you give us clarity, give us direction and guidance, God, as, as only you can do. Now, so God bless us and keep us and strengthen us. And we'll give you all the praise. We thank you, Lord, for all the Bible classes in 2022 and how you've helped us, Lord, for this year. We thank you for blessing us, God. We ask you, Lord, to continue to bless our Bible studies every Wednesday. Give us a word for growth and for strength, and we'll give you the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.